A couple hours ago, Apple released all new betas for, you know, Mac OS, iOS, Xcode 11.4, all that stuff. So a lot of new news is coming out. Uh, one of the biggest things and, and one of the things I'm most excited for is what you see here on the screen. And that is updates to universal purchase and app store categories. So it says here starting in March 2020. So that's also a hint to when, you know, Xcode 11.4 and all this stuff is going to be released probably next month sometime, uh, you'll be able to distribute iOS, iPad, macOS, tvOS versions of your app as a universal purchase. This is awesome news for developers, and to me it's a clear sign that Apple is getting ready for SwiftUI and Catalyst to be the norm uh, coming up. For those that aren't aware, SwiftUI and Catalyst will essentially let you write an app once and have an app for iOS, iPadOS, macOS, watchOS. Of course, I'm oversimplifying that. There's you know some work you have to do. And SwiftUI and Catalyst are still super early. Like we're probably a couple years away from this being the norm, but I think this is in clear preparation for it being the norm, right? Because right now it's hard to have an iOS app and a macOS app because you have to write two separate apps and it's kind of a pain, right? Well, now with SwiftUI and Catalyst, you'll be able to write one app, have it on all the platforms, and then now everything is a universal purchase. You can see the direction that this is all going. And let me show you a firsthand example of this with an app that I used heavily during my contracting days, and that was Time2. So Time2, here we are in the macOS app store, uh, has an app, and if you scroll down here, you can see the in-app purchases. The single user license was $26.99. I believe I paid like 16 for it, but this was like two years ago. But the point is, I had to buy the Mac app just to have it on my Mac, and then I had to go to the uh, iOS app store that you see here and also purchase the iOS app. And to me, this was a requirement because I'm contracting, I'm constantly doing work remotely and updating my time on my phone. So I needed this to sync up, but because there wasn't a universal purchase, I had to buy the Mac app, download that. I had to buy the iOS app separately, download that. So with these universal purchases, that all goes away. I think it's great for developers, great for consumers. And then really just to finish this up, uh, updates to app store categories. Uh, you can see you'll be able to select the following categories. Developer tools will now be a category. Obviously, us developers gonna love that category and graphics and design. And you know, Mac OS is gonna get all these ones, the books, drinks, magazines, navigation, shopping, and another change of combining the photo and video categories into one called photo and video. Uh, real quick though, how you'll be able to do this, again, this isn't gonna be ready until March of 2020, uh, or you can kind of mess around with it in the Xcode 11.4 beta. But again, it sounds like 11.4 is gonna come out of beta sometime in March, 2020. Um, but you see, you can choose to create a new app uh, for these platforms using a single record app. That's if you're building a new app single record app will get you that universal purchase, or you can add platforms to your existing app record. And then of course, get started by building and testing your apps using a single bundle ID with Xcode 11.4. So if you're in this situation where you have a Mac app and an iOS app, download Xcode 11.4 and start playing around with this universal purchase and get ready to launch that in March of 2020. Cause again, I think it's awesome for developers, great for consumers. Like I said, I, I've had to do this as a consumer. So all around good news, really happy to see this, but that's the quick update for today. See you in the next video.